There is no denying that humans have a fascination with animals. Whether that's owning your own pet or visiting a zoo to see some of the most exotic species the planet has to offer. But many of these animals should be left alone to live their lives, because at the end of the day, most of them do not have our interest at heart and have instincts that can do some serious damage. That could be because you're stepping into their territory or because you're taunting a half-ton bull. Well, here are five people who've been brutally attacked by animals and live to tell a tale. Now, before I start, I just want to say that this video isn't to shame animals in any way. Animals will usually only attack humans if they're provoked or because it's their natural instinct to hunt or be aggressive. Humans, on the other hand, kill 56 billion farm animals and 90 billion marine animals a year solely for food. So, although animal attacks are horrific, compared to the amount of animal cruelty stories out there, there is no comparison. Carl Akeley Carl Akeley was born in New York in 1864 and was a famous taxidermist, which is someone who stuffs animal skins to create lifelike replicas. Although purposely killing an animal for the sake of research may sound unethical, Carl was known for his contribution of stuffed animals to many museums in the US, including the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. But on his first trip to Africa in 1896, he came very close to losing his life. Whilst out on an exhibition, an unexpected 80 pound leopard came running out of the forest towards him. He tried shooting at it but missed several times and quickly ran out of bullets. Instinctively, the leopard went through his throat, but lucky for Carl, the cat was slightly injured and slower than usual, and Akeley was able to shield his neck, causing the leopard to deliver a serious bite to his upper arm. He wrestled with the leopard and it bit down hard on his hand, so he rammed it further down its throat so it would let go. It did, and after more wrestling, he slammed it to the ground, got on top of it, wrapped his arms around its throat, put his knees on the leopard's chest and suffocated it. He was very badly injured afterwards, but posed with the leopard that he had killed, and this iconic photograph is still displayed in the Field Museum in Chicago. Thankfully, later in life, Ackley had a change of heart about hunting and became a respected conservationist, setting up Africa's first wildlife sanctuary in 1925. But whilst journeying to the Congo a year later, he came down with a fever and died on November the 18th. Carl Ackley was buried in Africa close to his beloved gorilla camp and has gone down in history as the man who killed a leopard with his bare hands. Julio Aprecio Diaz Bullfighting is a traditional blood sport practiced in Spain, Portugal, southern France and parts of Latin America. The Hispanic culture see it more as a ritual art form and the matadors are held in very high esteem amongst the Hispanic community. But taunting a half-ton bull is a risky business as many matadors find out, but Julio's attack is one of the worst out there. He was taking part in a bullfight on May the 21st, 2010 when he was hit by a bull called Opiparo. The incident happened as Julio was attempting the faena, a move in which the matador uses his cape and sword to deliver a death blow. But Julio lost his footing and the bull's right horn went through his neck and out through his mouth. It sounds hard to believe, but there is video footage to prove it. Take a look at this. After the bull withdrew his horn from Julio's mouth, he tried to escape the ring but fell unconscious and was rescued by two fellow matadors. He suffered a punctured tongue, a fractured jaw and several broken teeth. Doctors performed an emergency tracheotomy to stabilise his condition, before a further six hours of surgery was performed to rebuild his jaw and mouth. After a few critical moments, Julio recovered and returned to the bull ring just ten weeks later. Just watching the video, you can see how close Julio came to being killed. Just a few inches and that horn would have gone through his throat or even his eye. Despite winning the fight, unfortunately for Opiparo, win or lose, the bull must die and he was killed by a backup matador. Charla Nash In 1995, Sandra and Jerome Herald adopted a three-day-old male chimpanzee and called him Travis. He was raised as if he was their child and became their constant companion, even sleeping in their bed with them. He was often seen out shopping and posing for photos in their hometown of Stamford, Connecticut, and was very used to human contact, appearing in several TV shows and adverts. Along with looking after the chimp, the Heralds owned a towing company and friend Charla Nash worked for them, doing paperwork and odd jobs. She also became close with Travis and helped look after him. But in February 2009, he proved that he was not as domesticated as they thought. He had taken Sandra's keys and was refusing to go back into the house, so she called Charla to come around and help, but as soon as she arrived, Travis attacked her. 
Charlo was completely defenseless and Sandra tried hitting him with a shovel several times and stabbed him in the back with a butcher's knife. But Travis had gone berserk and continued to attack Charla, who was now on the floor. Sandra called 911, screaming to the operator that the chimp had killed her friend and was eating her. You can also hear Travis screaming in the background of the call, which is incredibly haunting. After the police arrived, Travis tried to attack an officer and after being shot, he rushed back to the house and was found dead, lying next to his cage. Incredibly, Charla was still alive, although she had been unimaginably mauled. The chimp had ripped off her face and all of her fingers. Charla was rushed to hospital and underwent seven hours of emergency surgery on her face and hands, and her injuries were so horrendous, medical staff were offered counselling to help them come to terms with what they had seen. She'd lost her eyes, nose, hands, and mid-face bone structure, and also had significant brain tissue damage. If you see the pictures of Charla before the attack and then after, it's hard to believe anyone could survive such horrific injuries, but this brave woman did and went on to have one of the first ever successful face transplants. Nowadays, Charla has turned her experience into a way of inspiring others and is particularly interested in helping injured and disfigured US soldiers who have sustained injuries during war. As for Travis the Chimp, his head was removed and tested for rabies, which came back negative, and his body was tested for drugs, confirming that he had Xanax in his system, which could have been responsible for his aggression that day. Travis's attack goes to show that no matter how long a wild animal may have been domesticated, they will always have a side to them that humans cannot control. The highly successful movie The Revenant earned Leonardo DiCaprio his first Oscar, and tells the story of a fur trapper called Hugh Glass, who after barely surviving a brutal bear attack and being left by two men from his expedition, manages to make it out alive and hunt down the man who killed his son. It makes for a great movie, and unlike some based on a true story movies, there is actually some real truth behind this one, and a man named Hugh Glass did really survive a truly brutal bear attack. Hugh was born in 1783 in Pennsylvania, and after being a fur trapper and frontiersman for years, he signed up for an expedition with the Rocky Mountain Fur Company as part of a trading exhibition in 1823. After the exhibition was attacked by Arikara warriors, Glass was shot in the leg and he and his party headed on foot towards Yellowstone River. As he approached the Grand River in Perkins County, South Dakota, he came face to face with a massive female grizzly bear and her two cubs. Before he had a chance to fire his weapon, the bear lifted him off the ground by his throat and slammed him to the ground before ripping at his flesh. She then went back to her cubs before attacking him again, ripping his scalp and crushing his arms and hands with her teeth. His fellow hunters heard Hugh's horrific screams, rushed to help him and shot the bear. Glass lay there horrifically injured and unconscious. He had a puncture in his throat, a broken leg and torn flesh. The expedition leader, General Ashley, was convinced Glass was mortally wounded and that it was only a matter of time before he died. Keen to carry on, Ashley asked two volunteers from the party, John Fitzgerald and Jim Bridger, to stay with Glass until he died so he could have a proper burial. As the group carried on with their expedition, the two men dug a grave in preparation for Glass's death. But he wasn't dying quick enough for them and after several days and with Glass still unconscious but alive, they placed him in the shallow grave, took his weapons and fled to catch up with the rest of the party, telling Ashley that he had died. As Glass lay there in his grave, against all the odds he regained consciousness and found himself all alone. His wounds were festering and he had no weapons or food. After setting the bone in his broken leg, wrapping himself in the bear hide that had been placed over him, and allowing the maggots to continue eating his rotten flesh to prevent gangrene, Glass started to crawl back to Fort Kiowa. Somehow, he was able to build a small raft that enabled him to float downstream. During his trek back, he lived on berries and roots, and on one occasion ate raw buffalo calf left over from a wolf kill. It's unknown exactly how far he travelled after his attack, but it's thought to have been around 240 kilometres. Along the route, he was helped by friendly Native Americans who tended his wounds and gave him food and weapons. When he regained health, he went in search of the men who abandoned him, but unlike in the film, he did not have a son and forgave the men who left him. After recovering, he carried on work as a hunter until his death at age 53, where it is said he was shot, then scalped by 30 Arikara warriors. Hugh Glass has gone down in history as not only a man who survived against all the odds, but also as one of the few people to actually survive a bear attack. Rodney Fox Rodney Fox was born in Adelaide, South Australia in 1940 and had a fascination with the ocean. Throughout his teens, he would spend hours spearfishing and by the age of 22, he became South Australian spearfishing champion. But in 1963, just a year after winning, he was defending his title off the Aldinga beach and was attacked by a great white shark. Now, great white shark attacks are very uncommon, being just a handful of reports every year. 
but when they do attack, if not fatal, they can be horrific, as you will see in Rodney's case. He was bitten on the chest and the shark broke every rib on the left side of his body. His main artery from his heart was damaged, some of his organs were exposed, one of his lungs were pierced and a piece of shark's tooth was embedded in his wrist that remains there to this day. His injuries were so severe that it's still considered to be the worst non-fatal shark attack ever documented, and it's a miracle how he survived. Remarkably, after 450 stitches and months of rehab and therapy, centred on overcoming his fear, Rodney returned to the water and exactly one year after the attack, he entered the Australian Spearfishing Championship in Victoria. Rather than resenting the shark that attacked him, Rodney became fascinated by these huge creatures, and over the years has studied them and even came up with a redesigned and safer shark cage. His studies have led to the conclusion that sharks should not be feared, they are not man-eaters but truly beautiful creatures, who would prefer not to eat humans as they are too bony, but get confused if something is splashing around in front of them so will attack. To this day, Rodney is a highly regarded world authority on the great white shark, and has turned a near fatal attack from one into a lifelong passion, writing an autobiography and an award winning children's book. So there's five insane stories where people have survived vicious animal attacks. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video then go check out the Top 5's website to read articles on similar topics to my videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week for another one.